Hi, today we are traveling to United Kingdom. UK is the birthplace of many great science YouTubers such as Tom Scott, Dr. Sally LePage, Steve Mould, Big Clive, and Boy in the Band. Well, Boy in the Band is not really a science YouTuber, but I've learned so many things watching his videos. So, and those are just a few I remember. UK makes up around 5.5% of my viewers right after Germany and United States. And I've heard a lot about how safe their plugs and outlets are. I'm going to go there and test them a little bit. I brought so many test equipment, security was very suspicious. So I went shopping to find a proper adapter to convert my North American plug that's earth, live and neutral into the United Kingdom one. But no matter how much I searched, I didn't find one with a proper ground, it's always plastic. So what, if your traveling grounding doesn't matter and you can't die? I could hardly find this one that had a hole for my ground, but that doesn't connect anywhere. They provided a fancy bag and not a ground. I guess I'll have to just go there shopping and find a proper extension cord or something. Ah, the beautifully miserable weather of London. I'd only heard about it, but to experience it firsthand. All the plugs are fused and all the outlets have these on-off switches. Yeah, see? All of them. Are these breakers or just switches? Even this ancient one. Yeah, 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 it's a pretty nice city, but where the hell is the breaker box in my hotel room? I can't find it anywhere inside or outside the room. Maybe it's in some central electrical room somewhere. I better not make any shorts. One of the interesting things about these bulky British plugs is that unlike their North American counterparts that have metal completely exposed on the live prongs, they have half of it plastic. So if it is inserted halfway and makes contact to live wires, only plastic is exposed, so it's safer. I mean, it's something to be tested. I bought this adapter here in UK with proper ground and fuse and everything. And if you look here, I shorted between the two prongs with a thin piece of wire. Now, when I plug it in, if this makes contact while these metals are exposed, this thing will pop open and I'll know. Otherwise, if I have to push it further in, it will push this piece of wire back and nothing will happen and I'll know it's safe. Okay, it's definitely shorted. Let's plug it in. Hopefully nothing will happen and I'll know. Oh jeez. Wow, I better clean it up before they see it. Well, I basically ran away. The breaker for all the room outlets just popped and I can't reset it, so hotel has to fix that for me. It's funny, these lights run on gas. Global warming, man, use LED. Well, the hotel reset the breaker. And one thing's for sure, this switch is just a redundant switch and not a breaker. And if you look here, the plug has to go quite deep before making a contact. I don't know why my test failed or why I did it like that while I could do it like this. So maybe my wire here was pushed into the socket instead of sliding away. So this is still safer for not exposing live wires. Also what I didn't calculate was that... Hmm? Hey, there are tiny doors on these outlets so you can't stick anything in there. Nice. The ground prong has to go in first to unlock these doors. Safety. Anyway, we have 240 volt AC, 50 hertz here in UK. Back in 120 volt AC Canada, my thin wire would pop first before any breaker would. Because any similar home all around the world draws around the same power, like 100 watt lamp is 100 watts anywhere. So things are designed to draw half the current on 240 volt AC compared to 120 volts. That puts much less stress on the power lines here and the breakers are set to trip at half the current compared to 120 volt AC. Also the surge current through my thin wire is double on 240 volt AC. That's why I tripped the breaker. In any case, the UK outlets have these doors on their big ass holes so nobody can stick anything in there. Not much more safety features compared to North American outlets I would say. I'm curious what's inside a UK plug. And you know what that rhymes with? 
Curiosity Stream, the sponsor of this video. Curiosity Stream, the best source of over 2400 beautifully made knowledge and science documentaries, including exclusive originals. See if you use my link curiositystream.com slash electroboom and promo code electroboom at checkout, you get a whole month of full access for free. And with their current offer, they give a $10 Visa or MasterCard gift card on an annual membership which starts at like $20 a year. For the love of God, don't lose this promotion. Here it's open. And one thing's for sure, if you step on these plugs facing up, May God have mercy on your soul. It's interesting. First, all these plugs have a fuse made in them, a 13 amp in this case, which if anything downstream in your device shorts, this will pop open, which makes for a much less interesting video. And you see here, the longest wire is the ground wire with some slack, and the shortest is the live wire. So if this thing gets pulled, the first thing to disconnect is the live wire from your device, which is much safer. So these plugs have much more safety features compared to their North American counterparts. I won't test their GFCI or RCD breakers in the hotel. I'm already embarrassed to have popped their breaker once. I'll wait until I get to my cousin's house. The London Museum. Wow, look at this. These things are air conditioned. So I don't know what they use to cool this down. It might be some Peltier devices or something. I like these floating lamps. Oops, how do you put it back? Okay, you try. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? Ah, there you go. And the LEDs are wirelessly powered too. Oh, damn it. Welcome to Cambridge. Now in my cousin's house, and look what I found in their cobble. They actually have a breaker box down here two sets for some reason and each set has one RCD or what's called a residual current detector which is the equivalent to GFCI we have in North America but the difference here is that the RCD is for the entire house rather than the North American GFCI that is only in the bathroom the GFCI and RCD are both to detect the live wire current going into earth instead of neutral and they pop open and the funny thing is that their socket has different shape here so that you can't plug the normal household stuff here and it's only for shavers and of course you don't need GFCI here because the whole house is protected by RCD well they may have protected themselves against plugging the wrong stuff into this socket but the North American plugs fit these sockets which means a tourist like me can plug anything here and probably blow something up Although I've heard that these outlets have their own internal fuse rated at much less current inside the wall, so it will pop much easier. See, any device draws current from live and returns to neutral. So if the current goes from live to earth, it's unexpected and the RCD or GFCI will pop open. And the usual case is that a user in contact with ground accidentally touches the live wire and gets shocked. So these things usually trip at much less current to protect the person. Well, first things first. What does it take to trip the RCD? I connected my North American wires to the adapter and let's measure. Ooh, interesting. The live and neutral connections are flipped here. So now white is live wire. I brought a bunch of different resistor values to put between live and earth and see which one will trip the RCD. North American GFCI trips at around 5 milliamps. So let's try a 47 kilo ohm and see if it trips the RCD. <laughs> Never use your bare hand. Oh, what did I pop? Let's just be careful, okay? 47k between live and earth. That didn't pop anything. 10k! Oh, there you go, it popped. The RCD is popped. How do you unpop this thing? Oh, there you go. You just need extra force. 14.7k? Nope. 12k? There you go. This means that the RCD trips at around 20 milliamps, which is a much stronger shock compared to the 5 milliamp of the GFCI. But on the bright side, the whole house is protected by the RCD. Now, what will happen if we plug things that are meant for 120 volt AC into 240 volt? 
Things like resistive loads such as incandescent light bulbs or inductive loads like motors will draw double the current, so quadruple the power. So those will blow up. But switching power supplies such as a battery charger or a laptop wall adapter are designed to work on 100 volt to 240 volt AC. So nothing will happen to these and they will draw half the current from the power lines compared to 120 volts. But on transformer based wall adapters such as this one, the output of the transformer is not regulated. So on 240 volt AC it outputs double the voltage. So if you use this to power your devices, they will blow up, although nothing should happen to the transformer itself. Of course, these wall adapters have components that might not be rated for double the voltage. You can do it! I'm back. So, UK plugs are fused, live wire disconnects first when pulled and no exposed live voltage on prongs. The outlets can be turned off and have doors on their holes. And the whole house is protected by RCD. Things we don't have in North America. I know some people that could have been saved by just the RCD. The rest of the protection sound kind of redundant, which is pretty important in safety critical systems. But hey, in North America, who cares about redundancy? So thanks to Curiosity Stream for sponsoring this video so I could go to UK and test their electronics and for providing great knowledge. Because you know, when a system is missing redundancy, you rely on your knowledge to save you. If you are a fan of documentaries as much as I am, then you will love what Curiosity Stream has to offer from nature, science, history, technology, lifestyle, and society. They are the world's first streaming service with great non-fiction knowledge and science documentaries, including exclusive originals made by some of the world's best filmmakers, featuring some of the world's greatest scientists, available on all sorts of platforms. So definitely, it's a treasure box. Go to curiositystream.com slash electroboom to get unlimited access and use promo code electroboom during sign up and your membership will be free for the first 31 days and thanks for watching